Hello, my name's Mark and I'm Chico Tutor and I'm here with Practical Machinist today to look at our very first program that we're going to produce on our machine. So the idea of this is if you've never written a program before and you've never run Gco before in your machine, this is a great first program to test your skills before we start doing production work. Okay, so what we're going to build in this lesson is a washdown program. So once we've finished machining, we've got swarf everywhere, there's chips everywhere, the machine's a mess, we can run this program just to clean the table. So it's a very easy and safe program for your first program. We're not cutting material, we're not even turning the spindle on, we're keeping the spindle well away from the table, so everything should be nice and safe. Now, I'm not suggesting that you copy my program because you should never ever copy someone else's program when writing G-code. Each machine can be slightly different and we need to be aware of that. But the idea of this is to give you some ideas to show you some options, to show you some example G-code of what this might look like if you were to do this. So when we're running our first program, we always have to do certain things to make sure we stay as safe as possible. We don't want to crash a machine. And of course, we can't rely that our program is correct when we first run it. We need to do a tape tryout. We need to run that program to prove it, to make sure it's safe before we can sign it off and say, yeah, our program is good. So to do that, we need to have our hands on that rapid control override knob and we need to have this as low as possible. We want everything to be moving slowly the first time we run this. And you might also want to keep your finger on the feed hold button just in case. Now, single block is also highly recommended. So we're running line by line. And as you hit cycle start button, you can see where that position is going to next. So we want to look at not only the position that our cut is currently in, but where it's going to, that distance is going to travel. And then we can look in the machine and make sure there's going to be nothing in the way. So if we see that the Z movement is moving down four inches, we can look in the machine, make sure there's four inches of clearance below our spindle before we hit cycle start and read that line. So these are the standard basic safety things that we have to do when we're running a tape tryout or a program for the first time. So bear that in mind and certainly don't copy my program line by line and expect it to run. Any program you find online um, will probably not run in your machine because every machine is slightly different. We need to take an example program and then compare it to previous written programs or the machine manual, preferably both, so we can get a good idea of how this might look inside your machine. So this is just an example program, it's just an idea for you to go away and write your own version of this before we start running it in a machine. Okay, let's have a look, see what that program might look like. Now, of course, if you want to learn more about this subject, you want to go deeper into G-code programming, I've got a four course bundle over on my website, gcodetutor.com, where I teach all aspects of G-code programming. And there's also some classes there on computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacture, machine shop, maths, health and safety, manual turning. There's lots of stuff over there. So it's worth popping over and seeing if there's a course there that would help out where you're at in your career at the moment. Okay, so let's make a start. Now our first line there is a letter. It's not a zero, that is the letter O, followed by a program number. Here's our safety line that I've spoke about a lot in previous um, lessons and videos here with Practical Machinists. So if you wanna know more about safety line, go through their back records and see what I, I teach about the safety line there. Okay, so we're gonna start off by doing a tool call. So I'm just calling tool one and MO6 turns on um, our automated tool change. So that will bring it over into the spindle of our milling machine. So on this line, we're setting our tool data up. We're testing, setting our Z lengths up to make sure that tool is not going to crash straight into the table the second we hit cycle start. So look into how your machine handles this, how you set tool lengths, etc., and make sure this is in place along with your work shift data before we start the program. So here I'm just wrapping into um, X0, Y0, just in the center of the table. So we're assuming here I've set my work shift datum right in the center of the table there. So X0, Y0 will be right in the middle of the table. And I've also set my Z0 to the table as well. And if you've got fixtures and stuff on the machine, I would set your work shift Z datum to the top of those fixtures. So that way any plus movement in Z we know is going to be clear. And so we don't want to hit any minus movements because then it's going to be approaching into where things are on our table. 
So let's assume our table's empty, we have nothing loaded in the machine, Z0 is set on the table, height there on the, on the surface of the table, so any Z minus movements will be going through the table, so we want to avoid that at all costs. Okay, so MO8, this is the most important thing for a washdown sequence, we're going to turn on the coolant and we want the most fastest, floodest coolant you have, it might not always be MO8, but whatever M code your machine requires to turn on all the coolant and flood it as hard as we can, so we can have got a nice load of coolant there to wash down our, our machine table. So now I'm switching over to G01, our controlled feed route move and I'm giving it a feed rate there at the end and we're coming 10 inches above the table so plenty of clearance. Now on this line I'm speeding up our feed rate a little bit now we've moved in Z that was I wanted that to move slower so we can make sure everything was fine now we can really speed up that feed rate a little bit and G01 is still active from the line above so we don't need to reinstate that and I'm moving to X 24 inches over to the plus direction in X there. And once we've reached that point, I'm going to come back and go 24 inches the other way. So I'm assuming our table is at least four feet long and we're going from one side to the other just in X. And I'm keeping Y0 the same on both of these. So we're keeping that cutter right in the center line. Now we don't necessarily need to state Y0 again because the machine is already there. Um, I've stated it three times in a row now and we really only need to put it on the first time. After that, it's not going to do any damage. If the machine can read that, it's fine. It's not going to get confused. So if you're unsure, you can always state it again and the machine is, will be fine. It's not going to throw up an error there. So now I'm coming over to Y plus one foot or 12 inches there. So I'm moving up in Y. So it's a nice diagonal move from the last position. Now I'm coming down in Y. So it's a two feet move there. We're going from plus 12 inches to minus 12 inches. So I'm moving down. So I'm assuming our table is at least two feet Y there in the Y axis. So now we're going to do a two axis move. We're coming over diagonally. So we've got um, X plus 24 inches and Y plus 12 inches to move it to this position. Another two axis move, moving diagonally to the other corner of the machine there. So these steps would depend on where you want to clean the machine, whether you want to follow the T slots and go across the table, or whether you just want to do a quick wash down as I've done here. So this is a great place to experiment. You can play around with these moves here. As long as we've got plenty of clearance from Z, nothing's gonna crash. So you can experiment here with moving these axes around and getting a good feel for how G00 and G01 work. So once we've done all that, we can now wrapid our tool up out of the way. So I'm wrapping up 15 inches from our table here or from wherever I set my Z0. And we're using G00. So the machine is gonna move in its fastest possible way using a rapid move. Now this is our go home command. When it reaches this command, it's going to send the tool back to its home position in Z. And then I'm gonna follow that up with its home position in X and Y. Now I like to do Z on a separate line to make sure it's fully clear from anything that's in the machine. This is an extra safety move. So first of all, we're gonna move Z right the way up, out the way, and then we're gonna send it back to its tool change position in both X and Y. There's a lot less chance of it colliding with anything here. Um, it's a bit more of a safer move. I'm gonna turn the coolant off with MO9. And finally, I'm going to finish the sequence off with M30. This tells the machine that's the end of the sequence and to rewind it back to the beginning of the program. Of course, in the old days, it was actually a physical rewind with tape machines. Now it just searches back through the front of the program and starts from there again. So the idea of this program is to not copy mine. As I said, it's, it's to use this as um, a way to make your first ever GCO program. And the things we've got to watch out for is it's very safe. Where it's your first program, you've got to be extra careful. Everything has to move very slowly when you're overriding that feed rate with the rapid override there. Finger on the feed hold button at all times. Single blocking, taking things very slow, making sure it's all fine. And once we've done that first sequence and we've gone through it and nothing's collided and there's been no near misses and everything is how it should be, then we can speed it up and let it run by itself confident that it's going to follow the same toolpath as before. So there's a few things here to watch when you're starting this off. Make sure you set your data position correctly and make sure the tool is set correctly. Once these two things have done and you write a basic washdown program with plenty of clearance there from that table, you'll find that it's a great confidence builder for your first ever program that you've run.
Okay, so I'm Mark from G-Code Tutor. If you want to know more about programming with G-Code, computer aid design, machine sharp maths, all sorts of stuff, you can pop over to my website, gcodetutor.com, and there's loads of free and paid resources there to keep learning more and more about programming your CNC machines.